Welcome to TechBrain YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to store and retrieve large images using GridFS in MongoDB. We'll break down every step of the code and also make sure everything runs smoothly. Before we proceed, let's talk about GridFS. GridFS is a specification in MongoDB used to store and retrieve large files like images, videos, or documentation. In MongoDB, it breaks these files into smaller chunks so that they can be easily managed within the MongoDB collections. Why do we need GridFS? MongoDB based on formats as a 60 megabyte size limit per document. So GridFS allows storing files larger than this limit by dividing them into chunks. Now let's use this business management system as example here. A company needs a media management system to store high resolution images, videos, and large documents for their users. File range from a few megabytes to several gigabytes. Here are the challenges. Standard MongoDB document storage has limitation on file size and also scalability issues with traditional file storage solution. And there will also be a need for easy retriever of metadata and partial file retriever. To solve this problem, GridFS will help us to split these large files of this organization into manageable chunks. Each will be stored as a document. And also GridFS allows storing metadata with files, simplifying search and filtering operations. GridFS can scale horizontally across a cluster, handling very large data sets efficiently. How does GridFS works? The file is split into chunks. By default, 255 kilobytes each. So each chunk is stored as a separate document in the special chunks collection. Metadata about the file is now stored in a files collection. To retrieve this data, metadata is retrieved from the files collection. Chunks are reassembled based on the metadata. GridFS uses two main collections, which is the FS files, which contains metadata like file name, length, upload dates, and file chunk references. And also we have the FS chunks, which stores the actual file data in small chunks. We can store our file by using the FS put method, splitting the files into chunks automatically. Then we can also retrieve the file by using the FS get method and reassembled by GridFS from its chunks. Now, what are the advantages for the media management system? One of the first advantage is efficiency. Large media files can be stored and retrieved without performance degradation. Scalability. It supports horizontal scaling across distributed systems. Metadata search. Files can be searched based on metadata stored in the files collections. Cost savings. This eliminates the need for external file storage system by centralizing file storage in MongoDB. Now, here are some additional use cases for GridFS. We can also make use of it in a cloud storage system by handling user-generated content like images, videos, and documents. Likewise, for document management system by storing and searching large PDF files or LEGA documents. Likewise for backup systems, by storing and retrieving large backup files efficiently. Here are some best practices for using GridFS. Customize the chunk size based on the file type and application needs. Ensure indexing on FS files and FS chunks collections for better performance. Implement a robust backup and recovery strategy for the FS collections and also leverage FS for partial retrieval of files to optimize performance for large files. Now, let us proceed with our code. The first thing we are going to do here is that we're going to set up a virtual environment. Open your terminal, just like I did here, and create a project directory. You can give it any name. Now, Then let's open this in our Visual Studio code.
Now let's create a file. Now back to our Visual Studio Code. You can see the file here. Now the next thing here is to set up our virtual environment. To set up our virtual environment, you run this following command. After creating our virtual environment, we have to activate the virtual environment. Now, the next thing to do here is, is to install the library that will be required in this project. To do that, let's install PyMongo. We successfully installed the library. So once this is done, we are all set to start working with MongoDB and GridFS. Let's go back to our Visual Studio Code. Now, we can see our virtual environment folder here. Now, first, we need to connect to our MongoDB database. The Mongo client establishes the connection to MongoDB. We define the database, create a grid FS instance link to that database. Now let's upload an image to GridFS. The function upload image takes the parts of the image file and stores in the GridFS. Now let's define the function. Now we are going to store the image. We open the image in read binary mode. The FS put function stores the image in grid FS with its file name. You notice that we, we added an image sample to use in our project. That's PNG. We proceed by uploading the image. This will upload the image from your project directory to mongodb you might also want to see all the file stores in grid fs so here is how you can list them let's create a function to store to list all the files stored in grid fs now we use the find method to return all the file stores in grid fs then we look through the files and print their file names and ids now, what if you want to download the file stored in GridFS? We are going to define the function that retrieve and save an image locally. We retrieve the files from GridFS using its ID, then write the file to a local directory. This retrieves our image sample from MongoDB and saves it as downloaded image. Now, let us run our code. Now we successfully implemented all functions required for this for this project. You should see the output showing the file being uploaded, listed and downloaded successfully. You can see it here. Image sample uploaded successfully image downloaded successfully from this id to this now that we have successfully run our code let's now view our stored files and their chunks using the mongo shell from your mongo shell and connect to the database where your files the name of the file as image uh the name of the database as image database now let's connect to mongo shell image database image data we have switched to the image database where we store the images to view the files stored in grid fs the files are stored in the fs files collection we will use the mongodb define command to retrieve them now let us get that done here is the file metadata each document represents a file stored in GridFS. You will see those like the file names, the length, the chunk size, the upload, the upload date, 
and the ID of the file. This give insight of how your file is told and it's look at how these files are broken down into chunks. This is where GridFS really works its magic. You can see the chunks output is identified by the files id linking it back to the original file the data field contains the binary data of the file y n, n represents the order of the chunks starting from zero you can see the second chunks n then n2 here yeah. So that is how you view files and chunks in GridFS using the Mongo shell. Now you know how to check what files are stored and how they are chunked behind the scene. And that is it for this video. Now here are some key takeaways. GridFS enables efficient storage of large files within MongoDB. It provides scalability, metadata management and partial retriever which are crucial for applications like media management systems ideal for businesses that deals that deal with large unstructured data and need a seamless way to manage it thanks for watching